Hi, I'm Manuel. Today I would like to talk to you about Dehancer Pro. So Dehancer is a great plugin for color grading and film effects for Final Cut Pro, DaVinci Resolve, and it's now in an app for an iPhone. Now, it is jam-packed. It offers a lot of controls, including exposure, contrast, analog range, limiter tools, color density, realistic grain, bloom effect, halation effect, defringe tool for chromatic aberration, false color for visual quality control, vignette, and there is so much more. It is jam-packed, offer a lot, and it's easy to use. So what I would like to do today, is just quickly talk about how they make this happen. We'll jump into Final Cut Pro, I'll show you how to put on your footage, I'll show you how to use it, and then if you stick around, there will be a very short video at the end to show you uh, what you can do and how you can grade it and what it looks like when it's a finished product. So first off, I would like to tell you that Dehancer contacted me, offered me a free copy to try for one month. And I liked it, it was easy to use, and I believe a lot of people could use this software and I believe that I want to use the software in the future as well. So they offered me to be part of the affiliate program and I agreed. So if you guys want 10% off, take a look at the description below for a link or a promo code that you can use. Also, whatever you're going to say in this video will be my own opinion. So Dehancer, who they are, how it works. So the company has been around for a while now and this specific plugin has been in development since 2014. The basis of the answer is taking some film, I revert back to Kodak once more, and being developing these and try to emulate that in a digital format. So with your digital camera, you can film, take photos, and then emulate the look of this old film camera. Now the way to achieve that is by basically building their profile around some sampling of real analog media and they combine that with non-linear imaging processing. The film targets are printed optically from negative to print media to ensure that they are correctly interpreted in terms of color and contrast. The company believe in accuracy and it's very important for them. So it is an evolving machine where they are creating more and more profile and refining the one that they have already offered to the public. So let's jump into Final Cut Pro and see how we can apply it to a footage and how to use it. So let's dive in in the Hanser Pro in Final Cut. I will try to explain quickly how every single option works. Bear in mind I am a digital artist and I may miss a few things while I explain all the options. So first thing on the left I put two little panel uh, for the color corrections here. So you'll find the RGB parade and the luminosity panel. So I want to put that there so you can see uh, what the changes do to uh, the luminosity and the color. So 100 will be kind of your bright spot, the maximum, and black will be right at the zero when it comes to luminosity and the RGB. Okay, so let's start. This footage was shot on a Sony a7 III. So the first little bit here, the input, we're gonna go through and choose the right format for our footage. So I will go choose the a7 III and it was the S-Log2, so here we go. Now we have the camera and the source chosen. We can start tailoring our image so it looks not too blown out. The temperature, make sure we have a temperature that fits and suit our need. I would like that to be a little bit more blue. And then again, the tint, I'm gonna go put that in the blue side, so. And the defringe didn't seem to do a whole lot on this footage. I can show you what 100% does to 0%. Same idea, it doesn't do a whole lot, so I will enable this function. So now that I have this footage roughly where I want it, straight out of the camera, we're gonna choose a profile, a film profile. So this is where 
the Answer Pro have lots and lots of options and different colors and different film. So you're gonna have to choose something that you want. For myself, for this example, I will choose the Kodak Portra 400. From there, you can choose to push it two stop uh, above or below. So we can see what that does for your footage. I can leave that for myself, let's say at zero. Now the neat thing is, if you change your profile, doesn't matter which profile you choose afterwards, all of the information in the input section will stay the same. Same thing if you push that to, let's say, one a step. Um, in a positive, you will see that it will stay the same there. So let's go back to the Kodak Portra 400 and then we'll build from there. We'll bring that back to zero. Some, oh, back to zero, I said. Some tabs will be closed like this one, so you will have to press show to open the tab. Now they will be disabled by default sometimes, so just make sure to enable it if you want to see the difference. Now the fill developer, uh, you'll find good tabs in there for uh, contrast and color. So basically, again, if you want a little bit more contrast in your image, you can play it there. So just a little bit in this image, I think suit well. The gamma correction, again, if I go like this, you'll see the highlights and the shadow changes a little bit. For this case, we'll leave that like close to zero. Color separation, again, it doesn't do a whole lot to this footage. We'll leave that 100%. Color boost, think of it a bit as vibrance. So we'll boost that to maybe 20. Now we have the film compression. Now, this is another great tab here where you can have uh, your white point, your total range, and your color density. Again, a little bit more contrast there. If you want to, the white point, I like what it does in the mountain peak there in the back. So we're gonna change that about here. The tonal range, so I like a little bit more contrast, a little bit more range in my tones there, 50 perhaps, and the color density. Again, a little bit more vibrance, I guess. We'll bring that maybe around 70, so a little bit more blue here. I can like that. Now the expand portion, black point, again, we're gonna move. It's, this is not a great way to change your white, white and your black in the image. You add a little bit more contrast to punch it a little bit more. Now I'm gonna make sure I don't clip there so I leave that just above the zero mark. And then we're gonna move that again so it stays, the blue stays on clip just about there. And the mode, you can change that to luminosity only or the normal mode that plays with the color and the luminosity as well. So you can always look at before and after by enabling, disable it this way. Now the print, so that will be related to your film, I would presume. So there's different options there. So you can choose and take a look, a lot of different variants. But for my case, I like linear for what we're doing. And again, you can change the exposure if you want to here. You can change your total contrast and you can change your color density as well. A little bit more vibrance and little color, but we'll leave that all as zero because I think we did pretty good where we were earlier. And the saturation, if you want to leave that saturated or desaturated black and white and analog range limiter that will basically limit to what a film would be limiting itself to versus having this in a digital format. You can play a little bit more and punch things a little further. The color head, this is a great space where you can actually play with, uh, you can split tone if you will. So you can play with the colors. So if you want a little bit more blue in your image, you can do that. Oh, you gotta enable it first, sorry. Or you can a little yellow in your image, you can play and tailor it a little bit. So in that case, let's make sure your image is a little cooler. And we're gonna add a little bit more, perhaps green, and then a little bit more red to make it a little bit more cinematic this way. So I changed all these separately. If you were to press gang, it will move everything together. So we get a little bit more for smooth uniform type changes. But let's just refer back to what we had before. Oh, and that one was about four. 
Okay, and then you can play with the tone, the, sh the tone in your shadow. So you, if you want to change your shadows a little bit bluish, but yeah, reddish, warm up or cooling your shadows, we're gonna cool the shadows. Same thing with your mid-tone, we're gonna warm the mid-tone and the highlights, we're gonna cool the highlights a little bit. So it's pretty nice, you can change a whole lot separately in your shadows, mid-tone highlights, and you can split tones. I really like this tab. And again, the impact is like how much opacity, if you're familiar with Photoshop, like how strong you want it to be. Let's leave that at 100. Now we have the film grain, self-explanatory, so that's for the film grain itself. Now, I find that if you go full overboard with this, it's a bit much. So I'll zoom in about like 150% to give you guys an idea right there. So take, can take a look here. Hopefully the compression doesn't hit that too hard. So I find that one for the size is actually pretty good. If you take a look at mid range in the six, you can see it's still too big. So one for myself, it's a sweet spot. And I don't like too much grain. See like 99, obviously it's, it's the great image a whole lot. So I like I can this five to about between five and 10. So let's go eight. And it adds just the right amount of grain to my opinion in there. So let's back out. Film resolution, see that as how sharp your image will be. So if it's 100%, things will be very sharp. If it's zero, things won't be as sharp. So if I were to again zoom in, that's in an area that I know it's fairly sharp. Uh, let's go to, let's say, these branches you can see in the back there. So if I go to film resolution zero, so a little bit more blurry now. And if I go to full 100, a little bit uh, more crisp and more, a little bit sharper. So we'll leave that perhaps at 60, back to fit. And then the shadows, how much grain, shadows, mid-tone highlights, and the chroma. Now, negative, positive. So, I find that it's really your preference. Once you have a little bit more grain and things in here, I find myself positive give a little bit better look, but you can change that. And again, if you want it to be into the analog kind of film or into digital format, it's experimental, it says there, so you can really push things a little further, but we'll keep it analog to keep this uh, where it should be. So halation is basically, think of it as a chromatic aberration a little bit. So the way it works, um, we're gonna be putting this all the way, bit and 50% there, we're gonna enable this and take a look here in the trees and in the snow. So source limiter, we're not gonna limit the source. I'm gonna play with this, we're gonna amplify this to the maximum impact to the maximum. And then you can tell there around the trees over here and around the snow bank, uh, it changes a whole lot. So basically now the smoothness is how smooth things gonna be. And then you're gonna have the background gain if it's gonna be a little bit limited to the edge of the background. Now if you wanna change the hue on this to have a little bit more for orange or red Tint. Let me zoom in a little bit. I'll show you right in the branches over here. It's very apparent, like right here. So basically the hue here, more yellow, more red. Can amplify it. Can change that to a bit of a blue compression here on the impact being very mellow to 100%. Now, if you're unclear on what you're changing, you can go to the mask mode and in here, you can tell that the branches that we're playing are red, yellow. So this is where it's been applied to, right? Okay, so we're gonna disable this now. Bloom, a little bit like halation, uh, will create a bloom around the highlight part of your image. So we're gonna be enabling this. And then we're gonna be, again, pushing that to the maximum to give us an idea. And then source limiter, you're gonna limit the source, so you're gonna get it go everywhere. And again, if you go close to, let's say these trees over there, I'm trying to find like a good range that give you a good idea, here we go. Take a look at the highlights in the trees there. So you can see that's gonna change 
quite a bit. You limit to the source there, the details, when it's stuck only to details, it'll go everywhere. The fusion. Saving the, the lights. So I'm going to zoom back out. Let me guess a bit of what it is. Saturation of it. And the impact again. 100%, less than 100%. And if you want to see what you're doing, you can see there. It's all over here. So I could see where that would be great for if you had like a nice bouquet in your image or things like that, you can really kind of play with this. But in this specific scene, it doesn't really do a whole lot. So we're going to disable this. And we have a vignette, very good vignette at that. What I like to do with the vignette is really bring the feather to zero. We're going to put it dark or bright. We're going to go at two stop dark. And then we can change the size, give you guys an idea. Can the ratio can change as well, and we can change the position if you wanted to. So it's kind of a neat feature that way. So we're gonna feather this a little bit, and then we're gonna change the exposure and the size. And you can have a vignette like this if you would like to. And then you have a few more options here. So film breath and gate weave. These are options um, that I think do, if you want to enable this, both of them, it will create some through certain period change in exposure and contrast and color. Same with this, that's going to be retaining your footage a little bit. It's going to be changing it on both axes there and rotation, and it's going to be zooming in and out. So you can tell like your footage will be moving back and forth, or you can change the impact of it. So this is something that you may see in older film, your footage seems unstable and changed in variance in color and, and contrast. That could be what you want to do there. Now the monitor, this is a great tool here. So you can use the luminosity RGB, like I was saying, to see basically if your image are bright or dark, but this is pretty much the false color I go to in my opinion. So what's like purple dark here is showing me that these are the area that are super dark in my image and what's red, those are the, the area that are white in my image, right? So if you change, let's say we're gonna go to the top here. If you change the exposure from zero to, let's say, super dark, you can tell now everything is dark. You won't be able to see anything. Or if I go the other way around, everything is white. So it's clipping, you can't see anything. So we're gonna come back and try to make it so it's not all the way either red or purple, and then you should have an exposure that's decent. And the clipping information, same idea here. We don't have a whole lot of clipping, but if I go back to my contrast, let's see here, we're gonna boost this contract quite a bit. So you can tell here we get this blue portion here. You can tell that this blue, it's been pushed beyond the 100 on both sides. So you can see that um, it is now peaking and it's too dark. So you can always kind of come back here and take a look here and play until you don't see any blue anywhere. So same thing if I were to go to exposure, too bright, you can tell it's the same idea, right? So you find somewhere that nothing is clipping and you know you have a good footage that's retain all the information. So these are, these are two great feature. The output, output is like how uh, the impact of the percentage of your changes if you made. So that's 0% opacity, if you will, if you were to use the Photoshop term, and you go up to 100% to apply all the changes that we've done. So you can quickly see the before and after that way as well. It's kind of a neat way. And the lot generator, so the Basically, if you want to create a lot out of this, you can export this as a lot and you can reintroduce that at the later stage if you like all the changes you just made. And the options here, it's your license and your profile. So you don't really need this once you get all of your information from the profile downloaded and you get your account up and running. So this is a quick and dirty look at Dehancer Pro in Final Cut. Hopefully that was uh, good. 
and you saw a little bit what you can do with the Hanser Pro. And this is how we grade my footage. Whenever I'm done after this, I will copy, edit, copy, and I could go to the next clip, edit, paste attribute, and you can basically just paste the Dehancer Pro version and you would get all that what you've just done there to the next clip. Now that you've seen what Dehancer can do, I'll give you my honest opinion. I think this is a great plugin because it's easy to use, it is quick to get some great results, and also there are so many options and you can do your bulk of your color grading with Dehancer, which is a major plus in my opinion. It is a bit tricky to install on your machine. There is guides that comes with your purchase that explain step by step how to do it. If you have any questions, feel free to uh, ask me. I'll see if I can help you install it if you have any issues. Now is it for everybody? Mm, I think yes and no. And the reason being like you don't need a crazy skill set to use it. You can obtain some fast results. It's fairly easy to use. You might need a decent machine to run it smoothly, but if you get the right setup, you can create so many different footage and movies that's going to look apart and it's going to be very fun to watch. So if you're interested, stick around and take a look at this short video. I used uh, iPhone and my Sony a7 III to produce it and it was color graded primarily with Dehancer. Okay, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Hello world, wake me up to another good, good morning, time to go. Got that smile upon my face, cause there's excitement in the chase, this I know.